This is the latest tiny but mighty lens from Samyang and let me tell you what makes this such a great all-around lens for both videos and photos. How's it going? My name is Jussi and this channel is all about filmmaking tips, tutorials and reviews. In this review of the Samyang FE 35mm f1.8 lens, I'll tell you the pros and the cons of the lens and why it's great for both full frame and APS-C crop sensor Sony cameras. Even though Samyang says that this lens is specifically designed for three main targets vloggers, street photographers, and Instagrammers who are looking for a compact lens. But I must say from experience that this lens is more than capable for a lot more other things than just those. Because of its small size and convenience, it's great for shooting a wide range of different subjects. It's fantastic for everyday shoots, indoor and outdoor, like food, people, cityscapes and all kinds of b-roll. Now, real quick about the price. Sorry, I have to check my notes because I'm very bad at memorizing a lot of numbers at once. But the Samyang costs around $405 or 344 euros if you're in the European Union. Whereas the closest competitor from Sony, the Sony FE 35mm f1.8 cost around $640 or 543 euros if you're in the European Union. So if you're on a budget, you save quite a lot of bucks with this lens. And I mean, it's insane to think that this lens weighs only 210 grams considering that it's a prime lens with f1.8 aperture and insanely good image quality. But on the other hand, let me give you an example. Samyang has a version of this lens that has f1.4. But to give you some perspective, I have another lens that has f1.4, but I almost always use it at least at f2.0 or f2.8 because at f1.4, the focus area is so small that when you're filming in manual focus, it's so hard to keep that area in focus. So I think this one is a better option for most people who are shooting on a budget. I also did this autofocus test where I walked towards the camera and the autofocus worked incredibly well, even with the aperture set at f1.8. And I also did this running test where I ran towards the camera full speed with the aperture set at f1.8 and it worked without a problem incredibly well, which was very impressive. However, I did notice something interesting when I did this autofocus test with the a7R 3 So I was sitting at the table enjoying some espresso and I noticed that the autofocus, it felt almost like it couldn't decide whether or not keep the espresso cup in focus while keeping my face perfectly in focus at the same time. But I must say that this is not the fault of the lens. This is the fault of the camera because it seems like, in my opinion, that the a7R 3 doesn't have nearly as good autofocus as my A6500 or even the A7 III has. So when I did the exact same autofocus test of me sitting at the table with my Sony A6500, I barely noticed any pulsing or hunting with the autofocus at all. So it worked just fine. So without going too deep into the autofocus and different settings of the autofocus in Sony cameras, I think that the autofocus with the A6500 and the A7 III are significantly better than in the A7R 3 But that's just based on my personal experience. Also, all of the B-roll that I filmed inside the library were filmed completely handheld because I wanted to see how well it actually works in a real-world situation 
the way I would use it in a real world run and gun filming situation. And I must say, I'm very impressed about how versatile that focal length is and most of all, how good it felt to film with the lens. I don't know any other way how to describe it, but the experience was great. I also did some photo tests with the lens and I think because of the nine blade circular aperture, it gave it this nice different kind of soft bokeh or bokeh. I don't know which way to pronounce it, but AKA background blur and it looked super good. And actually this photo that I shot of myself, which I'm gonna put on the screen now, this photo of myself with the beer bottle, I shot it literally in under 10 minutes, just minutes before I had to return the A7R 3 to the rental store. But luckily I made it just in time to the rental store before it closed at 9 p.m. Also, the lens has this customizable switch which you can set to different functions such as aperture control mode. And there will be other functions available also through future firmware updates. But for me personally, I will probably never use it, but I'm sure that for some of you, this will be a helpful feature. Also, another feature that gives really good extra points for this lens is that it's actually weather sealed. Even though personally for me, it doesn't really help because I never go outside and film if it's raining or snowing. But I'm sure that for many of you, it will be a very helpful feature that you might need. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I don't like everything about this lens. First of all, the focus ring is focused by wire, which means that the focus ring spins infinitely, which makes focus pulling with manual focus very difficult. The second thing that I really don't like about this lens is that the filter size is 58 millimeters, which means that it's a lot smaller than in all of my other lenses. And because of that, I have to use and fiddle around with all of these step up rings, which just slows me down, especially in these run and gun situations where I have to be very fast. But that being said, neither of those are deal breakers for me. I mean, for the price that you get in this lens and the quality and the versatility and everything, I highly recommend this lens. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, subscribe to my channel and click the bell notification so you'll be actually notified every time I upload a new video. Also, if you want to learn more, watch this video over here or this video over here because I believe that you're gonna like either one of them. Okay, thanks for watching and see you again next time. Take care.